I'm going to keep it a full buck with y'all. Warrior Cats has no reason being this good. <laughs> now, I know I've been gone for a while, but this review is going to be a little bit different. Warrior Cats, at least the first series anyway, has six books, and it's over like 56 hours of content. And I'm just going to summarize it within like maybe 10, 15 minutes, hopefully. Probably even less than that, maybe five. Just um, not spoiling anything or anything like that. And then afterwards, I'm going to give my score. And then after I'm done with that review, I'm going to be talking about like spoilers and everything like that. This story is so character driven that like I can't really tell too much of the story. I can only give vague details. But anyway, speaking a little bit on Warrior Cats. Warrior Cats is a series that released in 2003, I believe. It was around when I was like in elementary school. It was like... It's presented as a kid's book, which is funny because there's a lot of gory shit in this book. I'm not even joking. <laughs> there is very vivid and gory details about death and how a lot of the cats, important cats too, die in this, I was about to call it the movie, but this book. There is some strong ass mental health problems these cats are facing. So like, you gotta be prepared for that. There is also sort of a placeholder for religion, like, the cats are very like religious. They they pray to like Star Clan, which is where they go when uh, cats die. And so, if you're not down with like religious beliefs, I'm agnostic personally. So like, throughout this whole review, I'm not gonna be demeaning or anything like that. I'm gonna be very praising of religion in this sense, like this sort of religion, you know. And there's the worst sin of all pregnancy now to give a small little summary about what this book is about this book is about a cat named rusty who gives up life as a house pet in order to like live with these cats who live in the forest who are like clan members <laughs> a different type of clan <laughs> there are four clans in the forest those being river clan wing clan shadow clan and thunder clan rusty follows thunder clan throughout majority of this book there he gets indoctrinated into thunder clan's beliefs and uh perspectives their life views and just overall just being a part of the clan and throughout this whole story he grows into a great person in this story you follow him on you will be seeing a lot of prejudice against him and he's just gonna have to grow a lot as a person in order to be accepted by both both his clan but also just all the other clans in general like they do not like him and i i absolutely understand why he gets forced into a lot of bad situations and into some clan wars and also just brutal stuff in general that i can't really talk about right now because it's spoilers just know that rusty goes through a lot of hardships and throughout this whole series you are just going to be so proud of him if you keep following him. Like, his decisions, a lot of the characters are just well written. They're like human characters. I really enjoy the way these characters are written. Each character really has their own sort of personality. And they're so unique. And they have their own, like, character traits. It's so nice. And even when they're making stupid decisions, it, it feels very human. Like... It doesn't feel like they're just doing something stupid just to be stupid. It actually feels like they would do that in their mindset, like because of their personality. I really enjoy this writing. Now, this is a bit of a downside. It took me about four hours in order to get really invested in the characters and the cast. And there's a lot of names that kind of sound similar to where you're just like, it's, it's hard to keep track, but like once you get the ball rolling, you just get very invested and you just like you sink into the book. Like it's it, uh, trust me, it's a very good book. It's a very good series. Although the character writing in this is very much immaculate and very immersive. Like I really enjoyed the characters in this book. Uh, book sorry i keep calling the movie sorry 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 although i really do praise the character writing there are some points to where like it, it's it feels very kid oriented to where like they repeat a lot of information that we already know in order to like keep that in your memory and it's super obnoxious and it kind of adds to the runtime of the books an example being like a very important character will die 
And then, like, let's say a book later or just, like, in that same, like, sort of, like, uh, book or whatever like that, they still talk about the character, like, they, they give, like, sort of the same characteristic. They're trying to make you remember that character, and I feel like it's not rewarding us for, like, paying attention within the book. Personally, I don't know if a lot of other books do that. I'm not necessarily the biggest book reader, but, like, for me, it feels very demeaning when you have to constantly repeat that, like, yeah, the character that you already know about, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, like, do a little synopsis to make sure you really know this character, or, like, you really know why this character died, like, it's, it's kind of stupid in that sense, but what isn't stupid is the descriptions of, like, the character deaths, like, it is brutal, it is brutal, some of the shit they be saying, and I'm just like, how did you get away with this? This is supposed to be a kid's book? And you're over here saying, like, this cat, like, cut this person's throat and now they're bleeding on the floor. Like, what the fuck? Speaking of that, that also reminds me, there's... There's a little bit of cringe in this book, and by a little, I mean... It, it is a little, it is a little, to be completely fair. They are cats, and, like, um... <laughs> there are parts where the cats go... Something is telling me not to do this on camera. <laughs> yeah, my fault. I'm not doing that on camera, but like, the cats meow. And just think of like, how a cat growls. They put that in the book. And if you listen to the audiobooks, just know you're in, you're in for some cringe. <laughs> the best thing I can sort of relate this to is Game of Thrones, like, this is like the teen version of Game of Thrones if there was like animals, like mainly cats in it. Like th that's the best I can relate it to. I think that's all I'm gonna say for the non-spoiler portion of this review. And I'm just gonna go into the score and after the score, I'm just gonna say all the other thoughts that like I missed or like that needs spoilers, you know. Personally, I'm gonna give Warrior Cats the first series anyway, an eight out of 10. I think it was very, it was very fun time. Like I really enjoyed it. It had so much personality, so much character. I was invested throughout. There was like barely any downtime. There is moments, like I said before, to where they recap a lot of information and I feel demeaned. Like I, I never really cared. I don't need that information relayed to me all the fucking time. But otherwise, it, it's a good time for the most part. Now I will be going into the spoilers. You have been warned. Starting off with my favorite character in this series, Blue Star. I absolutely love Blue Star. I think Blue Star is one of the best leaders and her death is just super sad. Like I, 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 I really like everything they've done with Blue Star. Like when she's on her last life and starts to have a mental fucking breakdown, it, it, it felt like, it, it felt so close to home. Like, I've seen and also experienced that myself. Like, it's so dangerous to both see and to do yourself. Like, holy shit, I, I absolutely get it. One thing I personally don't like is that, like, she called Bright Paw. She renamed Bright Paw to Lost, Lost Face, I think it was. And it was kind of fucked up, not gonna lie, because Lost Face... Well, I mean, she lost an eye and, like, got fucked up by the dogs. And, like, why why would you call her that? Like, come on. But other than that, she's just a well-written character, a well-written leader. And I just, I love her throughout the book. Even when she's dead and she goes to Star Clan and she starts talking to Firestar, like, there, like, some, in the last book, in the last book, some of the quotes she be saying makes me want to be a religious person like holy shit like it it's some good ass lines in there <laughs> i don't think i hated any character in this book but i'm just gonna go through some of my favorites just to like just, just to highlight some of the highs in this book firestar is absolutely amazing he is like he's like the most courageous most stupidest most smartest person ever and he feels so human and like his growth actually matters like when he gets the title firestar you're just like you're applauding for him like it, it it's such a great feeling firestar is a hundred percent a character who's 
earned that title. He's earned the right to be a leader. I love it so fucking much, dude. <laughs> Tiger Star is an absolute great and also fucked up villain, which I really, really enjoy. From the beginning of the book, you know something's up and you thought like, you know, they're gonna end up fighting within like, I don't know, end of book one, end of book two or something like that. But, but no, it's like towards the end and I also need to talk about the end, but I'm getting ahead of myself. But like, no, Tiger Star is a fucked up person. He kills kids. He kill he kills anybody, bro. He is, he is out here doing the most. I think he's an absolutely enjoyable antagonist and it really does suck that like, he dies by a random clan that gets introduced in the last book. I think that's the weakest part of this whole series. Like, don't get me wrong. His death is extremely brutal and everything like that. It's just that like, with all the tragedies and like treacheries he's done to like, you know, the Thunder Clan and just clans in general. And just to have him die by another random clan, like Blood Clan, who gets introduced, I think that's such a cop out to me. It's it's such a cop out, dude. Although I really do respect and misdirect at the end of the book, it's it's just not very satisfying when you were building up so much of like this destruction, this evil with inside of him that needed to be like vanquished. And, and now you're just like, nah, he just dies. Like, that, that sucks. Like, it's just bad. Now, I really do enjoy the last book. I really do enjoy uh, a lot of what it has to offer. It's, it's, it's just that, like, Blood Clan, it's kind of stupid. I'm not going to lie. Like, they're, they're like feral cats who happen to be in the city or wh wherever, Two Lake Place. And then, like, they apparently, like, kill dogs and, like, wear dog fangs or something like that. It's, if it was built up more in the book, I would understand. But the fact that, like, it can't, it comes out of nowhere and it's kind of like a scapegoat towards the end of the book, I, I don't really fuck with it. Stone Fur is another character I very much enjoy and I, I really respect his death. His death was, like, one of the, one of the best deaths in the whole entire series like it was so impactful and honestly during that whole like um sequence i thought they were gonna kill gray stripes kids and i thought they were gonna go like super super fucked up and i was like wait y'all ain't like this are you like oh my god but thankfully they didn't go that route like i really wanted them to but like they didn't go that route it's fine another part that's really fucked up is uh snow kit or I, f I forgot what their name was the the cat that was like super blind and got picked off by the hawk i think that was kind of fucked up not gonna lie but not as fucked up as silver stream's death silver stream's death holy shit imagine getting pregnant and just like just dying like dying because you give childbirth like that's that's kind of fucked up dude as a kid reading that as a kid that's fucked up that's fucked up and then gray stripe has to deal with all that grief and being torn apart between like picking between his clan and like river clan like what wh what do you mean like he's going through so much gray stripe gray stripe goes through so much and it's it's just absolutely insane dude <laughs> cloud tail is another character which it took me a lot of time in order to like understand them because like i ain't gonna lie they were annoying as fuck throughout the whole i think they got introduced in like book three maybe because like that's when princess gives her kid i think i think it was book three but um yeah, Cloud Cloud Tail is just annoying as fuck for the longest time until he finally like grows up and becomes like I don't know uh, reasonable. I have nothing else really to say about Cloud Tail other than I I enjoy him. Like he was annoying at first, but now I kind of enjoy him and I kind of fuck with him. Yellow Fang is my second favorite character in this book and she is just written so masterfully. Like she reminds me of my mother like I, I love it. I love it so fucking much, dude. <laughs> she is such a hard ass, and I, I just, I really enjoy it. Like, the way she raises, not raises, but like, I guess sort of raises Cinderpelt, like, it's it's amazing. And when Cinderpelt finally becomes the uh, medicine cat she needs to be, it's, it, it's so nice. It's so, it's just like, I love Cinder so much. She's my baby. I love her, dude. <laughs> I could really just go through all the characters 
I enjoy in this book, which is like all of them. Like I could just say everything I enjoy. It's just a well-written book in, the, in all honesty. But I guess I'm gonna end it there. So that's all I have to say. Anyway, how's it going, pups? It's the K9, and I'm 